I'm making dice for my buddy, so let's get the good times rolling. I took a gamble on being pals with him, but it's been a paradise so far. I hope he thinks this gift is to die for, but if not, I'll roll with it. And do I expect something in return? No dice, amigo. Now, I'll stop talking about this pair of high rollers, cause then I can get my pal some paladin dice. So today's dice video is going to be a bit different because I'm not trying something brand new. I'm just making a gift set of dice for my buddy's brand new paladin in the campaign that we're in together, and I hope that he's going to truly enjoy it. I'm going to use a couple different techniques from some previous videos and molds that I've made before, so if you want to check those out, I'll put them up there. But the only thing he gave me was a color scheme of silver, black, and red. So I'm going to use some silver to create a cold casting on my molds, and then I had to decide between the black and red for the other primary color. I ended up doing black because I thought red numbers look better than black numbers and I'll just ink it red when it's done. This silver mica powder is going to be awesome for cold casting, or at least a pseudo form of cold casting because we're not actually using metal, it's just mica powder. I'm going to use a q-tip just like I would a paintbrush and paint quote unquote the bottom or the inside of this mold. I'm only going to do the bottom half because I want to be able to see through the top half and there's going to be a lot of excess mica whenever you do this and it's going to pool up in the corners. Not really a big deal, just tap it out back in the cup and a lot of the mica will come out. Make sure you're wearing gloves and a respirator. This stuff is really tiny. It's almost dust-like. You can coat the entire inside of your molds with mica powder if you'd like. I've done that in a video before, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put the rest of this mica back in the bag because it's totally reusable for later. Now, we need to talk resin. I'm going to use Envirotex Light Resin, which is a one-to-one -one hardener to resin mixture, and I'm going to mix up about 50 milliliters of it. 50 milliliters is more than you need for a cap mold set like this. I'd say you probably only need 40 milliliters. However, I'm going to be doing two different different colors, one of them transparent and one of them black, and so I want to have extra. I never want to run out and have to mix them up and be on a weird timetable. So I'm going to mix up some of this Stuart Semple black pigment powder. It's the blackest black you can reasonably get, and I have a ton of it. You can totally just use regular black alcohol ink and it will probably look about the same. I mix up a little bit more than I probably need here of the black. I only really needed a drop or two, but I'm going to add to the clear ones some of this liquid glitter, which I've shown how to make in a video as well, and that's just going to make it shine and pop a little bit more. It looks purple, but when it's inside dice, it's actually going to look very, very silver. As I set down some wax paper, that way I don't create a mess whenever I'm doing these cap mold things, it's time to start pouring and create this layer effect that I'm after within these dice. I want the edges or outer part of the dice to be transparent, except for where the silver is, with a black core. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and pour some clear and then pour black directly down in the center. The clear will kind of form up and around the black that will create an almost like shell, and then we can put another layer of clear by waving it back and forth on the top and kind of encapsulate the black inside the die. I used way too much black for the effect that I was after in here. You'll be able to see one die that has it kind of perfect. However, the rest of these you can see I put a lot of black down in there. So these are going to end up looking more just silver and black than they are silver clear and black. You can see when I'm filling up the D10 here and remember the D10 for later because that's the one you'll see and go, oh, that's what he was trying to do with all the others. I ended up liking the effect in the end, but you, you'll see what I'm talking about, that that one is more clear than the rest of these. These are just going to look a little bit more silver and black with the D10 looking how I originally intended it. I added an extra layer of black resin onto the lid so that when I flip them over it will have a black bottom, and then I pop the surface bubbles with my lighter. You can see there was some glitter left over in one of those surface bubbles. That makes for a pretty effect. I'm going to go ahead and put the lids on, and whenever I do so, if I have squeeze out coming on all edges where the lid meets the bottom half of the cap mold, that's a pretty good sign that you have the lid on there properly and enough resin to make sure you're not going to have any bubbles or voids whenever you take these dice out of the molds. They're pretty much good to go now, so we're going to put them inside the pressure pot for 12 hours. Once we pump this bad boy up, we're going to leave it around 30 to 40 psi. Anything in that range will totally work just fine, but I wouldn't go anything under there. You might get some bubbles showing up if you do. Now, after taking them out, you can see, wow, look at what that silver cold casting did. There is silver stuck all to these dice, and they look freaking awesome, if I do say so myself. However, they still kind of look silver and black as far as this D6 and most of the others do. You can see a little bit of transparency on some of the edges, but that D20 is just silver and black, which isn't a horrible thing. This D10 here, you can see the transparency a lot better, which is what I was going for, but I'm not upset with how this looks, so I'm not going to stop it. The D20 was the only die that I noticed had any excess resin on it that I needed to sand off, so I'm going to take some Zona paper 
sandpapers, which are just really, really high grit sandpapers, and polish it up. It's not a big enough job for me to break out my pottery wheel, so I'll just do some hand sanding. It's nice to do that every now and again, and it only takes about 10 minutes, and bada bing, bada boom, we have a set of dice that are ready to be inked. And I'm gonna ink them with corn red because I absolutely love that color, but it's a really, really thick paint. I do get asked every now and again how to deal with thick paints when inking dice, so I'm gonna show you on this transparent spoon. If you add a few drops of water, not very much, you can thin your paints out to get a consistency that you like more. I like to go for a thick, almost cream-like consistency. You can see here whenever I paint the brush on this transparent spoon, you can kind of get a good estimate for what I like to use. Anything thicker than that and it won't flow down into the bottom, but anything thinner than that and we'll start to see the under part of the dice. As I paint this on, I just wipe off excess with my finger and we've got ourselves some completed dice here. There may be some spots that you can't quite wipe away and if that's the case, you can just add some alcohol to a towel or paper towel and it will pretty much get the excess off after it dries. You can see here after just wiping off the D20 alone, a lot of excess paint came off. So it's a good thing to do if you have the time, though it's definitely not required. I gotta say, I'm just really excited to have this skill that I can share with my friends via GIFs. Okay, now reading applicant number 87 for the part of Skillshare Transition Guide, Drew Nasati, voice act. Let's give you your best shot. <clears throat> Did somebody say Skillshare? No, man, that's just not gonna work. There's no, what is that? That's my dog. He's got the look. Does he act? What? what? No, he's can, a dog. Can he say the line? N no, he's a dog. I will give you $10,000 right now to get that doing the Skillshare transition. Hey, Loki. Hey, it's totally me, Loki, and did somebody say Skillshare? Gee, thank you, Loki, and thank you, Skillshare, for continuing to sponsor my videos for unknown reasons. And if you have not heard of Skillshare, they're an online learning community with a bajillion classes for creative folk like you and I to explore new things or even just deepen your existing skills. They are always adding a ton of new classes, and membership is only $10 a month with an annual subscription, which is pretty rad. Because of that, the whole thing is designed around learning, so there are no ads on your videos, and you can kind of take them at your own pace and be super focused. You can learn to do leatherworking, traditional style artwork, or even resin work on their site, but I've lately been looking at a lot of the animation stuff that they've got going on. One of my favorite classes has a little up and coming talent, a little bloomer named Heel Natric Paris. It's called Animation Station featuring John Burgerman, and I think it's a blast. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. So let's help each other out because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a whole month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. But enough about this creativity stuff, let's get back to what we created, which is some awesome looking dice. Honestly, I'm really proud of how these turned out and I think he's gonna absolutely love them. The red could have been brighter if I was going for a more traditional paladin look and I bet a really light blue would look amazing on these. Of course, gold also would, but this kind of darker red fits with their character who's playing an Oathbreaker paladin or a more quote unquote darker or evil paladin, though their oath is breaking away from a dark sex. So I think it looks really cool and I think it's very thematically appropriate and you can see that thickness of paint made it so you can't really see down in behind the paint and it's still thick enough to give a nice even coating of color. So I'm really proud of how these turned out. I wish they were a little bit more transparent but honestly some of them do have some good transparency still. The D6 is pretty decent and that D10 of course is awesome. But as always how do they sound? Okay, not entirely sure what it is, but whenever I make sets to give people, I roll a nat one on them, so sorry for the cursed dice. Either way, buddy, I really hope that you enjoy this new set for you, and I hope that you all enjoyed watching a video like this. Let me know if this is something that you're interested in, because I do make a lot of sets like these, and I know you all like seeing dice making videos, but I typically try and keep it to new things. But if you want to see videos like this where I'm making sets, even though it's not something entirely brand new, I'll happily make more videos like that. Just let me know in the comments down below. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Subscribe if you might want to see some more videos like this in the future, or how to make your own dice molds from scratch. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.